Today, God is saying to you, the difficulties you are experiencing may make it difficult for you to trust me. Do not allow this to happen. When Peter heard the storms while walking on water, he began to sink. Even though he knew where he was going, he began to slip. He was more concerned with the storm than with trusting me. When he concentrated more on the storm, the storm made it difficult for him to trust me storms may occur in your life as well. The storms may cause you to focus on it rather than on me don't let the storm make it difficult to trust me at that moment by focusing on the storm. You are aware of this, you have made a promise, and I will always keep those promises. So, instead of focused on the storms, begin focusing on me believe in me. I have a strategy to help you get through what you're going through. Don't be concerned about your past, and don't regret your past by focusing on what you're confronting now. You are in the right place, according to my will. When the Israelites arrived in front of the Red Sea, they complained against me and regretted leaving Egypt. They advised me to stay in Egypt. But they forgot that when they grieved their present, the one who led them to the Red Sea was the same person who created the Red Sea. Because of what was in front of them, they forgot my promises. The present might sometimes make you regret your history. It may make you believe that if you had done that or gone through that process, it would have been better. It may make you regret your past by causing you to be concerned about what I have already saved for you. You know I have a plan and a reason for everything. I will lead you to your blessing in the same way that I took the Israelites through the Red Sea to the Promised Land. So, instead of worrying about your circumstances and mourning your past, start trusting me. I know you're concerned about certain things, my darling. Maybe about your parents, or your spouse, or your children, or your schooling, or your career. I understand how stressful these situations are for you. Let me assure you that worrying will never change anything, but your confidence in me may. Let me tell you something, I will put certain things in your life to the test to see how much you trust me. If you do not write the correct answer on an exam, you will not pass the test. Later, you will have to rewrite that exam to pass the test, even though you must write the correct answer to pass the test, or you will have to rewrite it. Similarly, when I test you, I will assess your confidence in me, your obedience to me, your patience, and a variety of other factors. If you lack any of them, I will let the problems you are experiencing to continue. It's because I adore you and want the best for you. You are aware that I will never accomplish anything without a plan. You are aware that I will shape, mold, and prepare you for the blessing that I have in store for you as a result of the difficulties you are experiencing. So, instead of concentrating on what is going on in your life, try to concentrate on me believe in me. I will transform your grief into the greatest joy. I will never let anything happen in your life without a strategy. David may have been something other than a shepherd lad. But I didn't do it. Because I chose David to be king long before Samuel saw him. His principal obligation as a shepherd was the safety and well-being of the flock. He had grazed the animals, directing them to suitable foraging spots and safeguarding them from harmful plants as well as wild creatures. In reality, I was grooming him for the throne. The primary job of a king is to ensure the safety and well-being of his subjects. 
So the events in David's life in the past were not in vain. Instead, I had prepared him for the future that I had planned for him in the past. Similarly, don't be concerned about what happened or why it happened in your life. Instead, trust me and move forth. Your history will not be wasted, it will only bring you to the future that I have planned for you. Believe in me. Rejection does not equal the end of your life. It signifies that I have better things in store for you as a response to that rejection. You are aware of what occurred in Joseph's life. When Joseph's brothers rejected him, they conspired to kill him. Later, Joseph was the one who assisted them by being their blessing. Similarly, don't be concerned about who rejected you or why you were rejected. Trust in me at that time. When I created and sent you into this world, I already had intentions to bless and prosper your life. So, being rejected does not spell the end of your existence. But it also means that I have more fantastic things in store for you. Believe in me. Some situations may leave you perplexed and prompt you to ask me, what else should I do now? When I made Abraham wait for a long time, the circumstance of waiting would have kept him from moving forward, and he might have asked me, what else should I do? Instead of focusing on the problem, he concentrated on me, and he addressed the situation by trusting me and moving forward. When Daniel heard about Daniel being thrown into the lion's den, he would have been unable to move on and might have asked me, what else should I do? But, rather of focusing on the issue, he concentrated on me, and he faced it by trusting me. They understood that if I allowed something, I'd have a plan. Even in your life, there may be times when you feel trapped and wonder what else you should do. Instead of focusing on the situation at the time, concentrate on me. Then proceed by trusting. I will never allow anything without a strategy. You are completely aware of this. Remember, everything that happens in your life is for my glory. So put your trust in me. I have a strategy for you. Don't let the circumstances cause you to lose trust in me. When I took the Israelites through the Red Sea to the promised land that I had prepared for them, they all complained against me. They advised me to stay in Egypt. They have lost their trust by focusing on what they see with their eyes rather than on me. There are certain events taking on in your life. It's possible that it's causing you to lose faith in me. But keep one thing in mind. I've made a vow to you. A blessing is promised to you. A promise to make you prosperous. A pledge to keep you safe. A pledge to offer you with just what you require in your life. You also understand that every word that emanates from my mouth will never be void. So put your trust in me remember that I brought the Israelites to the Red Sea to open the path to the promised land that I had prepared for them. So put your trust in me. I have a plan for everything. Remember, you made a promise. If I've made that promise, I'll keep it. It is true that if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and repent of their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Also, when my son was asked about the end times by the disciples, he told them that country will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be tremendous earthquakes, famines, 
and pestilences in many regions, as well as terrifying catastrophes and divine signs. Nations on earth will be in misery and perplexity as the sea rages and tosses. People will swoon from fear, fearful of what is to come for the world, since the heavenly bodies will be shaken. They will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power and splendor at that time. What I want to say to you is to pray and prepare for the big day that is coming. I will not provide you some of the items you have requested, because I already know what will happen if I give you those items. Peter and his pals prayed to me for the fish all night while fishing, but I did not respond to their petitions, because I had something else planned for them in the morning. If I had granted them what they had requested, they would not be known as they are now. Similarly, you may not receive certain things for which you have prayed. It's not because I'm not listening to your prayers. I am aware of your prayers. But it's because I've got a plan for you. You don't have to be concerned about how a door will open. At the appropriate moment, I will open the door that leads you to the benefit that I have in store for you. You are aware of what occurred in Joseph's life. I made him wait as he hoped for a door to open. He trusted me even as he was waiting. But, as you can see from what transpired in Joseph's life, at the perfect moment, I opened a door for him, leading him to the benefit that I had planned for him. I'm sure you're waiting for a door to open as well. But let me assure you that your patience will not be in vain. I've erected a shield around you to protect you from any danger. But I will occasionally open that hedge to test your faith in me and to demonstrate to the devil how obedient and trustworthy you are to me. You are aware of what occurred in Job's life. You know what happened before I opened the hedge I planted in Job's life. Even after those things transpired, Job did not curse me, instead, he trusted me. However, he questioned me. I didn't respond when he questioned me. Instead, by asking him certain questions, I made him understand who I am, why I do everything, and for what I do everything. When he realized his error, he apologized to me. After that, I restored his riches to twice their previous level. Things like what happened in Job's life can happen in yours as well. But it won't ruin your life. When such situations occur, trust in me and remember that I have a plan for everything. Even if I remove some things from your life, I will replace them with better things than you had. Even in the midst of your difficulties, demonstrate to the devil how obedient and trustworthy you are to me. I will never abandon you. I will shower you with blessings. Believe in me. Thanks for watching this video.